opening Monday, May 9th, 2016. Opening prayer, Father Jay, St. Paul, Father and Father Jay. Let us be in prayer. Dear wise and loving Father, thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here this evening. Thank you for your many abundant blessings to us and our community. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health we need to fulfill our callings, for sustenance, and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work and for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities for others. In the scriptures, you've said that citizens ought to respect the governing authorities since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. Therefore, I pray for our mayor, for the various levels of city officials, and in particular for this assembled council. Graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues of our times. Grant them a sense of welfare and the true needs of all our people, a keen thirst for justice and rightness, and the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement. In your most blessed name we pray tonight and always. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Third reading. 
so that we may maintain a little bit more pride in our past. Thank you for your time and for your service to our great city. Thank you. Osborne from North Stonebury Street, South East, North Hampton, Ohio. I don't have any prepared remarks. I just want to address several pieces of legislation here. Uh, your first one there, 33 2016. Uh, again, I scratch my head. We continue to give these tax abatements to multi millionaires and corporations. That's LMD, that's uh, uh, DHOP. And refuel our home. And I think this is probably the second abatement that they have paid. They brought one job to town, and I think he was only given credit for 20 hours a week. The compensation that you propose for uh, the 
key positions here in the city. Uh, I think I provided that to uh, the council. Since 2013, we're looking at a 26% raise for the director of administration, a nearly 44% increase for the director of law, and nearly 28% for the finance and city engineer. Now, Mr. Peters uh, started this because of the, the search for a new finance director. Maybe I should call to your attention the responsibilities of the director of finance have probably been cut in half in the last year or so. We are outsourced now uh, income tax collections to the state and utilities uh, have been automated. Both of these activities have resulted in probably a 50% reduction in personnel in the finance director. So that's one thing. I don't think this is warranted one iota. I went back and looked at the uh, ad that was posted uh, back in 2010 when Mrs. Albert came and this, she apparently is making it a routine to not show up for meetings anymore. I guess I can't blame her. Same thing when she's going to meet us here. You've actually reduced the requirements for this job, the qualifications. You're requiring a CPA or an MBA. I qualify, I have an MBA. You require banking and finance. I have banking experience in commercial lending at the former Bank One. I have several years of credit experience, lending millions of dollars. I qualify for this job. Of course, I know that you probably hire a monkey before you hire me, but I don't know why these salaries are being increased and why the, the job description and the qualifications are being watered down. There's so many uh, qualifiers in this announcement. Uh, there's nothing for you to hang your hat on. You can have this or you can qualify for this. Are we grooming a friend of the mayor or a former friend of uh, council for this position? I've been up here for uh, 16, 17 years and it's good to be a uh, uh, musical chairs of the people that cycle in and out of key positions in this city. Uh, I was done years ago with Mr. Zumbar uh, after just a short while. Uh, it became obviously this was just like a, a uh, temporary stop for him on his move up the, uh, the ladder. So I'd like to know, honestly, why there was a need to increase these salaries. North Canton is still struggling. You're going to create such a disparity in salaries between the rank and file workers in this city. And for many years, uh, what we've seen is either no salary increase for these uh, unionized employees or one to two percent a year. And you increase the cap for these positions in double digit. And I'm sure you're not stupid. A 25% increase for somebody making $100,000 a year is $25,000. How much of an increase for somebody at the bottom of the pole making $25,000? And you just give them a 1% or 2% increase. You're creating problems for yourself now in the future. And I don't know if these people can, can strike, but you're obviously looking at going directly to uh, binding arbitration and you're going to lose every time because of these uh, inflated salaries that you're giving out. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.
have seen by my research, and the numbers may be a little bit off because some of this is from the computer. North Canton is the second smallest city in population. If you look at the salaries for the director of law, our second smallest population has the second highest salary. The only salary hired for director of law was Akron with a population of 198,000, which is about seven or eight times what our population is. And anybody that reads the internet or the paper knows that there is a surplus of lawyers. There are, have been universities who are closing their law schools because there are new jobs for lawyers. So my personal opinion is that this salary is inflated unnecessarily. Same with the director of finance, where the second highest salary, and I realize it's the range, and that's the top cap. And the, what they sent me was either a fixed salary or a bare top cap. And again, for the director of finance, the only one that's higher is Akron with their 190,000 folks. So I ask you not to pass this on emergency tonight, do a little bit more research and, and make these salaries more realistic. Okay, tonight you get two hands on one. My second handout is a copy of the building permit for the new assisted living in Appleville. As you see, the value of the buildings are $16 million. It's going to be a huge business with three-story apartment buildings, assisted living, I don't know how many beds are going to be in the assisted living. Usually these big ones are 100 bed. And the single rooms usually command around $4,000 a month rent. Most of the jobs are minimum wage jobs, except I know they have a corporate director that does all of their assisted buildings, and they will have one director of nursing. They'll have one LPN on each shift. The rest are all minimum wage jobs. The cooks, the cleaners, and the care aides. They aren't even certified in their states. State law says they only have to be care aides. There's going to be a lot of money made out of this complex. So I ask you please to consider not giving this developer a 15-year, 100% abatement. If you feel that you have to give some abatement, cut it down to maybe 25%. Because like I said, there's going to be a lot of money made here, and our schools need the money very, very badly. Thank you. Thanks. John Arnold, 95 Winston Road, Akron, Ohio, uh, 44313. In, uh, in my experience on public meetings, a, a, a mostly empty council room is, is, is very much a positive thing. It means each one of you uh, are, are really doing a good job and, and the feathers are not ruffled uh, too much. So, so for that, thank you all for, for doing you know, a good job and, and having the best interests of our community. Uh, in mind. Uh, just, just very briefly, in regards to the CRA legislation, as I've stated before, I'm a North Kent guy. I had a graduate, graduate from Hoover uh, with a little convincing, hopefully down the road, my wife back down here uh, in, in this community. And uh, it would be a shame to see you guys not use every single economic tool uh, available within your tool chest to, to continue, to, continue uh, to keep this community, uh, the community that each one of us in here you think so when you think of North Canton. Uh, you think of wonderful, safe neighborhood, uh, community great jobs, uh, wonderful city services, the schools, of course, top notch. Uh, I would hate to see a waste of opportunity to, to keep our city uh, a great place. So, thank you all. Thank you. <laughs>
So moved. Second. Keeson? Yes. Peters? Yes.
communities that you know has experience dealing with a larger, much more diverse budget, uh, we need to be competitive. You know, you're, you're not a small-time law director, director of administration. You're, you know, well, small-time director of administration. We're going to pay a small-time pay too. And you know, we need to be. I'm not necessarily looking at the size of the community. I'm looking at the level of uh, expertise that we're going to attract. Well, and I think the other thing to recognize, and I appreciate this chart, but at this current time, you know, looking at law and finance and. The only one I'm not sure about is engineer. We're 20,000 below. I mean, most of these levels. So we are possibly with Wadsworth, which somehow has you know some uh, some lower numbers there. But if you look at the other ones in Fairview, 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 Fairview Park, and Upper Shore, we are 20 plus thousand below in a lot of those. So I, th I think you know, and John, you said a good remark. It's tools. It's tools that we have in our tool belt to attract and retain good talent. And this gives us the flexibility to. <coughs> to have some higher limits. If someone comes in with all that expertise that we want and can handle challenges that we may have or can bring on their insight, then we need that ability to move on that. I mean, I think, I, possibly, I think they just hired somebody. So Green was able to attract somebody for 100,000. And Worcester, but we didn't pull Worcester numbers, but they're basically higher and they have a similar profile that we have. Yeah. Now, and, and if I could, you know, before we go here, um, and I, and I think Chuck, in his comments, kind of alluded to this fact. These aren't automatic raises for these positions. These no. are salary ranges. Right. Okay. It gives us flexibility. We have always and historically been lower than, than all the communities around us, including our, the communities that are on here. Um, I think we've always been very um, fiscally sound in our, in our salaries that we've given uh, some of our executives. And, you know, it's just where we're at right now. I looked at Green when they hired their finance director below it. That was a salary range. Below it was 95, and I think it was upwards of you know, 125. So, you know, we you know, we put ours out at the same time they did. They were, I mean, these, they were, the these were the salaries, right, Marion? These were the current salaries that they're getting. Yeah. So they could have a range just this Yeah, salary. their range is probably a little higher than no, that. But no, anybody, it's their range. But anybody that was coming in, if, range. if we kept it at the at where we were at, okay, and you compared apples to apples, who, where are you going to get the better applicants? They're going to go to green. And it's just as, as simple as that. Okay. And, I, and again, I understand the size of the city argument. I, I get that. And, and, I'm, and I'm with you 100% on that. But in order to attract the type of talent that we want to attract, we have to compete with some of the bigger folks. Well, and if we want an MBA, CPA, those are the kind of wages that you are going to have to generate. So we might not say that on there, but we are certainly looking at that. No, no. I mean, I just asked tonight, David and I were talking, and I said, like, is the CPA or is the person? And we are looking at that. Mark, um, yeah, I'm not a big proponent of ranges. Ranges would offer you, you know, a wide variety. It doesn't mean we're going to hire them than this, but at that level. But the other thing ranges do, it gives you incentive for keeping those people as they grow, as they get move further, you can move their salary up, especially if you don't want to lose people when we do get them. So to have ranges really helps them to get, to get the right people, but then keep them with us, even, even though we do get them. Some are going to come on someday and add, add another five or 10,000 bucks to some of go. You know, where we have what that person means a lot to us, we can hold them, as long as we have the range of that. But to hire them at the highest salary, I, don't, I can't imagine that we would give the highest salary. Right. You know, it's, it's the range. So uh, I think, you know, you look at these numbers, they're, they're kind of apples and oranges in some ways. Your mm -hmm. the range is 75 to 115. Right. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it gives you that flexibility to get the private sector people as well. Yeah. Like you would chop. Any other comments? Right. Okay. Uh, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion and a second to adopt uh, the first reading of ordinance number 37-16. So Second. Yes. 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 Thank you. I'm going to have a motion and a second to read by title only. First reading of ordinance number 38 dash 16. So
and a second to adopt the first reading of resolution number 2 16. So moved. Second. Yes. 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 Thank you. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council for three readings for resolution number 2 16. So moved. Second. Yes. 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 So 
I'm all for it. I'm excited to be doing it. Okay, I'm sure. Uh, just another kudos to Doug for the good cleanup that we had. Uh, we didn't actually yeah. say that, but that uh, was just a wonderful uh, event that we continue to do, hopefully, over and over again to uh, stress clean up and come down. The other thing we had the really open day this past weekend, and uh, the mayor got this opportunity to throw the first pitch. What he did not realize is that they moved the mound back. <laughs>
Mr. Treasurer. Uh, I appreciate you passing the ordinance and resolution on emergency and short notice that we gave you, and we do appreciate that so we can get going on that. And uh, just so there's, uh, uh, I guess, no, uh, for the record, uh, Engineer Benitez works for me. He's part of our staff. He's not here tonight. And the reason he's not here is because I excused him from not being here. He has a, a family thing, and also he has nothing on the agenda, so that's how that's done. He goes to me, he just does not show up. I think anybody that's worked with Engineer Benitez knows that he's a problem solver, not a dodger. He'll be there. He's there at 8 or 9 o'clock in the meeting. He'll be the first person that I call in the morning about the uh, alley and the streets because he'll know everything about that and how they're named, and, and he'll give us uh, probably two or three ideas on how they want to do that. So just as a member of my staff, he's not dodging anything. There's nothing in the charter or anything that he has to be here. He's at most meetings, but I excuse him. Yeah, he's always there. <laughs> Because your address does say portage, so it's a little confusing for the delivery people and then also people coming to visit our house. Uh, it's something I never thought of. <laughs> it was so, uh, really interesting and a beautiful thing for your child, too. I like that. Uh, and then Mark and I went to the opening day, and it was kind of, it was really interesting because, you know, all before noon on Saturday in North Canada, we went to the Special Olympics that was held here in North Canada. We had hundreds of special needs athletes and volunteers and coaches. That was a great event. I had a lot of support from the JCs. And then I went to the opening day uh, for the Little League, which was, that's fantastic too. And Mark always leads the Little League pledge. pledge. I was going to say prayer, but the pledge. And that, that event is fantastic. I mean, you get hundreds of little ball players and their families out for that. And, and Marcia, thank you for reminding me. It is my most stressful day of the year. My son was <laughs> <laughs> so I there was nothing, you, you could, you, We could have all sorts of events, but that drawing out that first pitch and the stress for me. I know it is. I'm a I've real baseball it. player, and I'm throwing out the first pitch in front of little leaguers that will boo you if you don't get up the <laughs> Not to mention, last year when I kind of lobbed it with accuracy, our councilman Threader reminded me, he that had kind of like an arc of a softball pitch there. I threw it underhand, so I threw a little pass for this one. I made over the plate, I felt good. Um, and I didn't get good. So the, uh, and then after that, we had the 720 market. That was excellent. So all within, I took a couple of my kids with me, all within a few hours, we went all these events all the time. So it really is, is very, very nice. And as you uh, notice, uh, with the spring cleanup, Doug, that was great because the first one, and people I had a call this morning when we had our city crews out there cleaning off their car, and the sidewalks in the street, people would run up, clean, safe, safe. As long as we keep it clean, we keep it safe. People love that. Um, what's that? Taste the North Can. Oh, yeah, that was oh, yeah Taste the North Can. That was another great event. That was. That was Last one. Yeah. Last one. I mean, uh, that was a record set for them, yeah. right? They, you shouldn't say your kids, it's like five hours. They took one of them. Yeah, no, that was really a great time. It was, yeah, it was a, it was a great event. Yeah, a lot of food. It was a great event. 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 Yeah. It was a great event. But no, you know, it's amazing when you look at what we have going on in the city. There's a lot of great events. And, uh, I, and, and, I, and I don't just say this. People regularly, as I know they come up to you folks, they say, you know, we love the city of North Lincoln. It's a great city. They like coming to shop here. They like coming to different events. And it's all because of the people that, uh, that serve here, you folks, and also the people that work here. Which brings me to my next uh, uh, and final subject. As far as the salary range, because Chuck, you bring up very good points, and Mary, you bring up uh, uh, excellent points too. I mean, our goal is not to give away money in the city because we have less of it. We certainly have less of it. But at the same time, uh, you know, you get what you pay for. If you want somebody that has experience uh, in serving as a finance director or a city administrator, um, then 
you know, you're going to have to be competitive with the city of Green, with the city of Kent, with the city of Akron. We're competing against all these other local subdivisions to get the best and the brightest and most talented in these positions. And I just know from hiring a number of people here that um, if you want to lower the salary, you can get plenty of applicants, but they just won't have the experience that you're looking for. So I appreciate council setting the range. Doesn't mean you have to pay the person that amount. The other thing with the finance director, each city's different. You look at the city of Canton, larger population, but they have an audit department with the staff. They have a treasurer's department with the staff. They have a budget director department in the uh, administrative office. They have a human resource department in its staff. They have uh, an economic development department uh, and its staff, as we do too. But on all those other areas, with the exception of economic development, our finance director is the treasurer. They're the pseudo IT person. They're a pseudo payroll HR person. They're the auditor, and then they have to manage the staff. They're the income tax collection, they're the utilities. So they have, uh, in, in our city, a lot of our positions are more of a, uh, a general. So they have to be able to do a lot. Because I know a number of people who have been inquired about the finance director position. And these are from larger political subdivisions. They do not have experience in certain areas that this position's covering. So it is one of the little things that are very subtle but really important. So I appreciate you telling us setting the range and increasing the vacation time. That's all. Uh, Madam Clerk? Um, I actually do not have a report tonight. All right. Yeah. Do you have a report to mention? No. Okay, we do not. For the record, no. Oh, what a nice comment. I think we look at the city of North Canton, we have 95 to 100 people. And, and we look at a person like Mike Ryan, the administrator, and what we're paying him. Go to the public, private sector and see what you pay somebody that run, run a small company that love 100 people and deal with five or six unions. and safety forces, everything else. I mean, we can get in for a bar, but I think those are good choices that the mayor made and we confirmed. So um, put that in, like I said, the private sector see what those jobs are. With perks. I know government, you have a good pension and so forth, but let's not lose sight of that. You know, this is a, a, this is a business here. It's a government business, but still it's very important to uh, it's a big our community. Well, it is. That reminds me of a conversation the mayor and I had earlier today, I think it piggybacked off a conversation we had about a week ago regarding the vacations. Mike goes on vacation, but something happens back here, we call. He's still responsible. He's still responsible. Right. And so, so yeah, the finance so, director. So, okay, that's what I was getting at. It's more, not as nice to buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, very good. Well, uh, seeing uh, no other business, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. This one. Now right, I'll call to order the special committee of the whole meeting, Monday, May 2nd, May 9th, excuse me, 2016, at 7.55 p.m. Clerk, please call the roll. You don't have to ask. You don't have to ask. Here. Although you are sitting there in front and disturbing the whole audience. No, he's making the front row. No, please go. You don't have to say you can only sit in the front row. Hey guys, have a good one. Yes. See you later. Have a good day. 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 Have
on the smooth. So let's start with water side. So we took it out originally because it's been sitting there for so long. I think a few of us were a little frustrated. And we also heard rumors that they were potentially going to put um, apartments on it. So that frustrated us even more because currently the zoning gives them the right to do that. Um, obviously, that's not what we want for Waterside. We help them build a road, the state of Ohio helped them build a road, put in high tech jobs, and it's been sitting there for almost 10 years vacant. Um, at this point, we've spoken to the owners, all of us, and they have written us a letter, and everybody has a copy of it, um, stating that they will, yeah, they will not build apartments on that property for the next 10 years without any question. So that is in writing, you know, I, I do not go back on it, but we'll make sure Tim feels it's signed, sealed, and delivered. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm okay with that, I and mean, that gives them 10 more years. Their ultimate goal is to put jobs in there, not apartment buildings. I think we all know that. They only make money if they put jobs in there, not apartment buildings. So that is our goal. That is their goal. I'm okay with putting Waterside back in. So I think we all need to agree on that. We're going to go one step at a time. So with Waterside, I'm opening up to conversation. What's it, what's it zone again? What is Waterside zone? It's GBE. What's Waterside GBE? Uh, GBA. A, but GBA allows multi-family. Okay. Of the 12 units per acre on the density. So would that be 50,000? So if they wanted to, so let's talk about that later. Okay. That's a different piece of legislation. Okay. 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 So let's start about Waterside, not future Waterside. Waterside right now. Okay. Are we putting it back in the area where they could get, if they built a business, 100% for 10 years? Or 100% for, yeah, 10 years? Because it's a new building in the CRA. I have a question. Um, isn't it in the existing community investment area now? It is. Okay. It is. No, wait, what? Yes, it's, it's, it's in the Doug asked, is it in the CRA now? Yes, it is. It's in the Main Street. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is in the Main Street. Yeah. Right. So okay. we were going to take that. Okay. Okay. okay, but the parcel, does the parcel end? How, how far back does Waterside go? Does it go to. Uh, the go to Mississippi. Yeah, it goes to Mississippi. Does it go further east to. Uh, Is that, is that the property limit? Is that the, is that the, the east property line of Waterside that's shown in the CRA? Yes. Yes. There's a home that actually sits right there. Right? Isn't that correct? Yes. Yes. And then we get the same. There's actually a home that's right there. Right. 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 So, so the property is outlined by the CRA correct. Uh, diagonal drawing that we see now. Right? Yes. Just want to make sure it was just point out to anyone that doesn't know that entire area is vacant. Vacant. Yes. And this is. I just drove up. Yeah. And I believe the Waterside Agreement built the road, the state, the city, and so forth. That was around 2007, 2008. Yeah. Agreements to bring in approximately 120 high tech jobs. It's just vacant. Right. It's just grass. So, so it's so just like these are tools. To encourage that. If that can bring something in, granted, it may be 15 years before you start seeing that in property taxes, but perhaps you'll start seeing it right away in income taxes. But if, if this doesn't encourage building on there, I don't know. Well, here's the point, here's the point though. It has encouraged it. Because why haven't they come to the table and in 10 years it's been it's been in the reinvestment again. What other manager do you give them? There, well, there are restrictions. No. There were restrictions. No. There were oh, there's still restrictions, restrictions yeah. on that for two team. Months, for two it has no, I don't think there was any restrictions. If they would have been shown where they for a job, they would have got it sometime. Maybe it was tech. It was high. That was part of the... Uh, I, right. I didn't hear that, but did you say that? I'm that saying that there would have been a business opportunity there. Wasn't there a big been available to them? There, there are restrictions on there through the grants. The 166 R and D grant. The restrictions are 50% of the jobs have to be high tech. Okay. Okay. And okay. That, was hot, that was a hot market when we wrote the grant, and then road was 
finished in 2009, right in the heat of the recession. Right. I since then, we've had a change. But I'm saying if they would have found a business to relocate their city ice center that went to Portage, yeah. right. they would have got the same kind of uh, abatement that we gave right. inside real estate. Yeah, inside real estate. Is that correct? It's 50%. They would have got 50%, got 50 but nothing's ever been built there. The land cost is much higher. That's up to them what the land right. costs are. That's what they want to sell it for. That's my point. But to your point, it's already in the mainstream here. It's already so in, but they really haven't done anything with it. I think that's an aggravation point from my end. I, I agree. But because we, we ponied up the tax dollars and earned some of our own money for that road. And I, I'm still perplexed why that hasn't happened. And now that you actually look at maybe there could be multifamily, there's, there's no way it would support that. Well, we do have our 10 year letter. And then that's fine, 10 year letter. I think we should look at zoning and stop that anyway. Because we, what we're after there is jobs on that corridor. Absolutely. Not multifamily, where yeah. someone writes us a, a, a communication and says, you know, we're not going to do it. We're just going to make sure it's not going to happen. Because we need jobs in this town. That's why we made the investment 10 years ago. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm so adamant and passionate about this, but I watched this just develop all these years and I'm still uh, so perplexed by it. So to me, they're out of it. They haven't done it in 10 years. That's my vote. But well, you guys can, you know. But they're in the meeting. They're, they're in now, but. So I'm, I, I won't. And I made that point to everybody. It became my conversation. Right? They're in, they're in it right now. So we really can't take it out. Well, we can do it anything we want for March. We can, I agree. You know, we can adjust this every two, you know, that's the point of this. If there's tools out there and no one's using it, maybe we should say, you know, maybe you're not available for it in the future unless you want to really do something with the community here. How would you remove that? Well, like we remove neighborhoods or, yeah. you know. However, before like you if they're there to do jobs, why would you remove them? Because they've not done anything with it. I know. What, what's, what was the point of it for 10 years? But if we remove them. you got to understand, we quit being the best ones now. This isn't just. It, it's a CRA uh, area that we have no investment with. We made an investment with them. That's the difference. Yeah. That's the other card we played. That's why I'm so passionate about this. Mm -hmm. so I, I understand. I mean, there's no more passion. But I think it's more frustration. You've had, you've had enough of it. And that's what no. I don't understand that completely. But it, 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 this letter is binding. There's 10 years there. That we don't want parks there. We know that. We said that. Okay. And because we were afraid what those parks are going to look like in 20 years. So, but we can change the zoning for this yes. anytime. So if you give them the 10 years and put this in, I, I really don't have a problem with that. Uh, we can change the zoning anytime. We can change it next year. But in, you have 10 years that there, if this is a binding letter that says no apartments in there, and we have the opportunity to maybe incentivize someone that can I mean, bring the businesses. Now we got until the end of 2019 before that grant restriction of 50%, uh, right? 2000 to the end of yep. 2019. Yep. So there's still time there. Again, we have, we can do this two years from now and change it too. So we're going to look at this every two years? Correct. It is in the current legislation. We uh, all agree upon that. So, just so you say, you know, I, I saw the letter and I, I think I require some additional information. I the letter, I believe the letter was signed by members from McKinley Development. <clears throat> That parcel is owned by Waterside Development in Stark County. It doesn't mention that they have the authority to, to bind the, the, the membership and so forth. But if, if that was their intent, I think it may have been something informal, a little more than a handshake agreement, and yes. letting you know we will put in writing that this this is what we're willing to do. I would just require a little more formal letter, but I think Doug had it. Correct. If you want to prevent it from being multifamily, then we should zone it that way. Yes. And I think we should do that regardless of what it is. Well, we are looking at the zoning code here real soon, so yeah. that's a whole other project. You need one at a time. Yeah. Okay. Dave, did you say what you needed to say? Yeah, um, just, just to clarify, I think that it's, um, I can sense Doug's frustration because it's been uh, the same frustration that a lot of us. You know, we did make an investment in, that, uh, in, in the water side, but we were hoping that we would have something built um, by now. But, but the thing is, it's still an area of growth for the city. And, and the goal of the city.
CRA is to incentivize, is to bring an incentive for people to build. Whether it's residential homes or commercial or, or whatever they're, they're looking to build. So that's what our goal is. If there isn't building on a particular lot, we have to ask why hasn't there been building on that particular lot? In the case of Waterside, it could have been due to restrictions, due to the um, state of Ohio grant, which said 50% of the jobs have to be uh, high tech. I also agree with the comments that our council members made in reference to um, you know, bringing in jobs. Because keep in mind that on average, 40% or less of the residents pay income tax that live here in the city. So 60% of the people that live in our city do not pay income tax. So when we're building residential, whether it's apartment, apartments or homes, that does not necessarily mean an increase in income tax, which is responsible for 67% of our general fund. Jobs, when you work in the city, the city is guaranteed to collect income tax from the job. So obviously the jobs are a high priority. Water side, if, if this can serve as an incentive or a greater incentive to bring jobs, I think that's a, that's a great tool to have. But as our moderator said, just because they put the letter, and I think it represents their intent, that they're saying we would like to have as many incentives to build for new jobs as possible, and that if they had extra incentives, they wouldn't be as inclined to build multifamily, right? But you're saying that's not a binding. I, I, I would like, like to be more. We right? so reinforce it before if something went wrong and, and there was a misunderstanding right. and so forth. Yeah, I'd, I'd like it to be. So the, the way to ensure it is to change the zone, which Marshall, that's uncertain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me make this statement. I'm, I'm pretty hardcore on this, but you know, I understand that killing development is good for the city. I understand they're quality developers. I'm not saying that. I don't want people to misconstrue it. Washington Square is one of the most viable and economical things that we have here, and we're proud of it. Mm -hmm. They've done good work here. But I also see where I think when we partner, I think they can hope and hopefully do more in the future. Yes. That's all I'm saying. I think there should have been a return on our investment right now. So that's my my aggravation. So we and I'll clarify you know, apartments. Uh, you know, to look at this, this would be, a, in, in my you know, vision kind of thing, this would be a nice mixed use place. Because you have to remember, when you put people somewhere, they're going to need places to eat, they're going to need places to do their shopping. So to, you just can't put, you know, a, a nice area there would be, you know, apartments in the back of businesses out front. I mean, in my, my true opinion, that point there, because you have more people there that are going to be hopefully working and shopping and doing this stuff. You just, you know, you just can't look over low the entire city with apartments, especially with the, you know, across the street going and so on. So I clarify that too, and I understand this frustration because of the years that he's been involved with this thing. Uh, but our, our business sense, we need business. Right. We need business. We need people. That pays our bills. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do to get them in here and pay your taxes on for that? I don't want to confuse you, Chairman. To answer your question, I'm yeah. So we're, so it appears as if we all agree we're going to leave Waterside in the CRA. They are currently in the CRA. We only wanted to clarify because we had talked earlier about taking them out. But we're going to get a little bit better at least, let, let me say this, because I brought it up to the ARA, and you know, earlier in my conversation. If there's not a shovel turn, I think we're going to do this in two years, then it's out. That is definitely I'd like to see, is this, I'd like to see this, this council put some type of a time frame, and that's going to coincide with one of those grants to do, you know, our grant return with the Waterside Project. I don't think that's unreasonable. What is the sunset provision on that? 2019. And we're in 2016. Because I think that should be a recommendation. Anyway. We bring this back to us right. every two years and review it. Um, if it's, if, and if you haven't taken advantage of it, then maybe there's another way. Maybe, maybe uh, you don't get the uh, you know, the data across. I don't know. And that's what we'll be doing, right? Every two yeah, years. Yeah, every two years. So 20, for right. right. year, 20, okay. right. probably 2019, we'll actually look at it. So by the time, I mean, actually, yeah, by the time the state approves this, it's going to be fall. So we'll look at it again in January of 2019. And remember that each one of these, just because we're setting up this legislation,
legislation to set up the, the CRA and its parameters, that from that, each one of them has to apply to another board, get that approved, that gets approved by the state, and then those, it's continuing, and we'll run through, like we did this evening, the process to improve them in the future. So if we're going to get more scrutiny, then simply be placed in the so you want to get this binding, whatever this is supposed to be, sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's it. So we all still agree we're leaving Sanctuary out, correct? All of Sanctuary is still pretty new. Monticello, I know I had you know, a few of you say, let's let's put the, the older homes back in, but there's still several lots to mix in with the older homes that are open. And then, because we can make the, the map anywhere you want it, but we can look at it two years ago again. Right, right. Well, that's, I mean, that's what I keep home. saying. So it's yeah, I mean, my, my concern, and I had some residents that have called. So obviously, we have new homes that are going in. And so initially, I said, well, Marshall, why can't we remove those areas that are vacant? Um, but I mean, we have homes that are 20, 25 years old. And this isn't a new allotment, which is taking a long time to complete. So I guess my question was, if you have people that are starting to look at it and you get that 15, 20 years and they start to do it with the kitchen and the bathroom, why wouldn't some reason incentivize those people the same as we wanted those people? And so I guess I, I didn't know why we couldn't keep some of it. And in the sanctuary, I would say the same. I just don't know the sanctuary right now. But I know these homes are, you know, some of them are old. And so did the CETA. What year was that? The CETA was just, what, 2000? Three, four, tops, so yeah, it's barely 10 years old. I think you make a good point. I mean, we you just can carve out the new lots are. Right. Well, Marsha, your point is CETA was in 03. But then, but they yeah. And they so didn't put a home in there until 5, 6. Until later, right? Yeah. 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 So, I'll see you towards that. I think no, I, I, I think you have a little bit of it. But if you're young family that's here, there's a family, and they're not in it. They're not in it. CRA, right? Right now, right. Which is amazing, right? But they're not, but we want to put that house in with some of the more fluent areas. And I think that for those people that, you know, they have to be in areas that live in the city. But that's what where this is about. It's, it's the story of uh, remodeling their kitchen or building a two-car two garage to their property, which they don't have. That, that's the focus of this. So, why, you know, include everything. Yeah, let's, let's, why 